Well, hello and welcome to Stand in the Gap. I'm Sam Rohr, and I'm going to be joined again today, as normal, on this program by Pastor Isaac Crockett. You know, without a doubt, uh, the impacts from the COVID-19 policies, many of which we know have been uh, rather draconian, uh, arbitrary, many, uh, but they have literally changed America forever. Uh, church life, uh, work life, family life, and certainly school life have all been impacted with uh, schools in particular being closed, classrooms emptied, uh, greater online instruction, and for millions, uh, no instruction at all for a period of time. But education in America, schooling in America has been changed. But there's one approach to schooling that has proceeded and gone forward with literally no impact at all. And you say, what is that? That's homeschooling. You know, normally in America, the number of homeschooled students is uh, a little over 2 million. But that number now, the number that are being schooled at home are multiple times more than that. And, and with the uncertainty that exists with uh, uh, government health policies relative to school work, uh, some are saying that uh, there's a greater likelihood of a second wave of this COVID uh, threat impacting our schools and that uh, individuals, uh, including uh, Tony Fauci from the White House uh, staff, uh, said last week, his actual words were, parents should plan on homeschooling their children this fall. So for millions of parents thrown into the position of having to uh, personally participate in their child's education at home, and many for the very first time in their lives, the number of parents now schooling at home have experienced a meteoric rise, and I'm saying all an unintended consequence of COVID-19 policy. So the question is this, how has and how will homeschooling be changed ongoing? Has the forced experience of homeschooling or schooling at home permanently impacted government schools or private and Christian uh, brick and mortar schools? Uh, has the role of parents generally been changed forever? Has the role of Christian parents been changed? Well, we're gonna talk about all of this here today on Stand in the Gap as we bring in in just a moment, special guest, uh, co-founder and president of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, Mike Ferris. I mean, Mike Ferris was the one founder. We're going to be talking with Mike Smith. Mike Smith and Mike Ferris founded HSLDA, Homeschool Legal Defense Association, many years ago. Isaac, let me go to you right now uh, and ask you. You're a homeschool parent. My wife, uh, Ruth Ann, and I were in homeschooling, all six of our children. Uh, we were involved for 25 years from the time we started to the time we concluded. And um, we wouldn't trade that experience for anything. And one thing I can tell you that uh, um, our school didn't close because of school days, <laughs> as many oh, other nice. schools closed. Our, we, were, we were in that space almost regardless of what happened. But you are homeschooling your young children. Schools all across the state and the country have closed. I'm just kind of curious, from your perspective, what have you and your wife, Jill, talked about as far as um, being glad as an example that you were homeschooling and really went on with education without being touched by this COVID policies. Yeah, that's that's a good point there, Sam. And, you know, sometimes Jill and I talk about you and Ruth Ann and other people we know and say, well, they could do it with that many kids. You know, we could do this with our three children. And, uh, and we're just thankful for so many resources there are now that even more than when you were homeschooling your children and, of course, with Mike and uh, you know, to have groups like HSLDA, and for us, we use the BJU press curriculum. So even though my wife and I both have been teachers, I've taught for years in public schools, and I've spoken in, in dozens, actually hundreds of times in Christian schools and things, um, it's still great to have those different resources helping us. And yes, with this going on, I think it was the second or third week that uh, the schools here in our state did not go back to school. Our kids were taking their standardized achievement test. They didn't miss a beat. In fact, uh, my fifth grader was, all, uh, was scoring uh, post 11th grade, almost 12th grade level for reading comprehension, for example. And all of that is going on while they were saying, oh, we won't be able to take standardized tests in the public schools. We won't be able to get back to school. 
So it's, it's definitely been a great help that way. But then also as Christian parents, it's a conviction of ours. It's not necessarily easy, but the, the very first Psalm uh, says, blessed is the man who avoids, you know, the ungodly, the sinners, the ungodly counsel, the scorners, he doesn't sit there, but instead his delight is in the law of the Lord. And he eats and drinks basically the law of the Lord as a strong tree planted by rivers of water. And so as parents, it's not necessarily convenient, but it is a conviction. And we're so glad we've made that choice. And at a time like this with uh, the COVID shutdowns, it really uh, helps confirm uh, that there are more important things, even than the physical virus that go on in our schools, in our education. And we're glad we made that choice. So when we come back from the short break, we're going to talk a lot more about those choices and about what's going on in our schools today. Truth, flexible or permanent. The Bible, ancient history or powerfully relevant. Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs. The pastor, commentator, or frontline combatant. Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter. With hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide, a website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution. Educating, informing, equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap. And we're going to get right in uh, to, the, to the meat of our discussion today. We're looking at uh, homeschooling, the meteoric rise of homeschooling in America, an unintended consequence of the COVID-19 policies. And our special guest right now is Mike Smith. He is the co-founder and the president of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Uh, Mike, thanks for being on the program today. Hey, thank you, Sam. And thank you, Isaac. Good to be with you. Well, it's great to have you on. And uh, Mike, just take just a couple moments if you can. Um, what have you, as being um, uh, there as the president of the Homeschool Legal, De Legal Defense Association, interfacing with the uh, million families or so in the country that have been homeschooling, what have you seen as the impact overall from the COVID-19 policies where classrooms have been emptied and schools closed? A lot of interest in homeschooling. Now, Sam, what we're calling this is really schooling at home because these parents never desired to homeschool, did they? Not like you and your parents, of course, and Isaac. But what has happened is now they're thrust into this. They have to figure out, how do I educate my kids? Do you know how many kids we're talking about? 57 million new homeschoolers, if you will. Now, if you divide that by two, let's say they each have two students or two children, right, in school, that's what, 26 million? What is that? 28 million families now. This is husband and wife, single parents. 28 million family units have now been thrust into a situation where they're responsible now for the education of their children. They never thought three months ago, two months ago, let's say, that they were going to be given this responsibility. They didn't plan for this to begin with, right? So they tried to have, they're trying to figure out what do we do just to get along. And of course, they're being told by the public school, you have to educate your kids. And they give them curriculum and they go online and all that. A lot of stress, Sam. Tremendous stress in these families today. And then they're looking forward. What are we going to do? And you said it. They may be homeschooling for another year. So we're getting calls from folks. How do I do this? I'm interested. I want to get more information. And so that's how we're helping. You know, Mike, there's so much going on right now. And for these people who have been thrown into the situation of schooling at home, and it's kind of a hybrid and a mixture. And like you said, it wasn't something they could plan for. It, you know, wow. for the rest of us who do it on purpose, we set up our plans all year long. You know, it's based around the start of school and things. Uh, what are some of the things that, are, that you're seeing from this? Maybe uh, even benefits that people are realizing. It's not necessarily convenient, but they're thrust into it. What are some of the things that people who never considered themselves candidates for homeschooling that are now, like you said, schooling at home, what are some of the things they're finding uh, with this time together with their children? They're finding out a lot about their children they didn't know. 
Mm. And they're finding out what they don't know educationally, what they do. And I think a lot of parents are shocked. It's mm. unfortunate, but a lot of children aren't like, they're just not learning in the public school like they should be. Mm. So now they know where the gaps are. They're finding out that their kids are really missing out on a lot of education. And that's number one. And of course, that's really frightening to them. What do they do about it? Number two is they're finding family. They're actually getting to be able to spend time with their kids. Isn't that one of the major benefits of homeschooling, I think, is the fact that it focuses on the family, on the relationship within the family. So they have to basically get along. They learn how to respect each other and love each other. If they don't, they're going to have chaos. So they have to work through these things. They have to be kind to one another, love one another, <laughs> and figure out how they're going to get along with one another. Thirdly, they're looking to the future, Isaac. They're trying to figure out what in the world are we going to do? So that's really what I'm seeing out of these families that have now been thrust into a schooling at home situation. Mm. You know, that's great, Mike. I mean, it, it's not necessarily what, what some people wanted, but no. uh, to be able to have that time. And I think of how many meals being a homeschool family, how many meals we share together, not just trying to get one or two a, a week in, but two, three times a day we're you know, around the table together and talking and able to know what our kids are learning. So throughout the day, we're adding to their education. Um, and you said though, that there's a lot of changes and people are looking at making changes. The government's looking at making changes. You were recently on our, our radio program and you said that as a result of what's going on with the coronavirus and COVID-19, that there are some policy changes that will probably happen. And every one of our listeners, whether they have school age children or not, they're taxpayers and our taxpayers yeah. money a lot of it is going into the public school system and educational system. Uh, what are some of the things that are coming up uh, in the future that we should be looking at? Well, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to have 30 children in a classroom. They're not mm -hmm. going to do that. They're afraid to do that. So they may have a, 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 a maximum of 10. So some kids may come in the morning. They may come in the afternoon. Some come on Tuesday, some on Thursday. That's a tremendous difference because the parents then have to take care of those children when they're at home. They weren't having to do that before, right? Mm -hmm. So now they've got to be there. That's number one. Number two, the schools are going to be offering more virtual learning. I mean, this is through the computer, let's face it. And that, that's a big deal. And I think the area that that's going to impact is in the elementary schools because parents, I have a neighbor who told me, I'm not going to have my first grader doing schooling online. I'm just not going to do it. Secondly, he said, I'm not going to have them there with a mask on. They don't know yet. If they're going to have to all wear masks, he said, I'm not going to do that. He said, I'm going to homeschool. So I think those are the major changes. School is going to change. There are going to be less students at school, if any. Now, that impacts a lot of things. The bus drivers no longer have a job, right? Uh, they're not providing food for these kids. And a lot, of this, a lot of the food that's provided for children in school based upon the poverty level, that's not happening. So they're trying to take that out. There's major changes that are going to take place that are impacting a lot of different people. And Mike, I thought Isaac's question was really good to you. Uh, I mean, was good. You were talking more about the public schools at that point, but yes. how do you see even brick and mortar private and Christian schools being impacted by what has happened and what will likely happen? Well, Sam, those larger schools are going to have the same issues, I think, that the public schools do. So if they have larger classrooms, now let's say they have 10 in a classroom, they can space the children out, but there's going to be pressure on them to basically not be like we used to do school. We could be right next to another student. That's going to change. And I think until that gets corrected, this is going to impact private schools. There's going to be some private schools that won't even come back. And so not only are homeschool, not only are public school parents having to figure out what they're going to do, but there's parents with their private school kids, they're gonna to have to figure out what they're gonna do also, because it's not gonna be the same. Let me shift gears a little bit with you, Mike. I think we're just trying to, at this on this program, because of the shortness of it, try to give a, a, a good perspective of um, how these policies relative to COVID-19, for instance, are changing so many things. We're looking just at the educational part right now. But, um, Part of our, our title was the unintended consequences. Yes. And, and you've already you've already talked about uh, some of those. It's it's dramatically throwing parents into that scheme of involvement with their children, uh, where they have never had to do that before, and they're beginning to think, "Wow, wow, is this something that I can do? 
Uh, maybe it's something that I should do purposely on a home, in, in the setting of a home. And as you're saying, when they interface with their children, a lot of that is experience uh, that they have never done because their kids are always farmed out somewhere else right. as an example. And they're finding out what they don't know and in some cases what they do know, which right. could be good and may, it may not be good, frankly. Well, uh, some of the stuff they're finding out they do know is going to be frightening to them. Let's face it, correct? No, well, I, I, you're right. And I think what you're talking about is just really right on point. And as our viewers are watching us right now, they're saying, mm -hmm, yep, I can, I can identify with that. Yep, I've seen that or uh, yes or whatever. But I want to go to another, another aspect of this, Mike, and that is that's the actual role of parents and the duty of parents. You know, on this program, we do a lot. We talk about biblical worldview and Isaac and I have both homeschooled our children. You did. You were early on. I was one of those who were early on as well. But we did it because we really believed that it was the parents' primary duty to be responsible for what went into the ears and the eyes and the minds of our children. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, in the Old Testament talks very much about fathers and, and, and teaching their children biblical principles, what God says, the truth about living when they rise up, when they sit down, when they walk, when they go to sleep, effectively 24 hours a day in a natural setting, imparting regularly truth. That's parents and that is homeschooling at its core for many who understand that. I wonder from your perspective, as you've interfaced with people who have called saying, hey, Mr. You know, HSLDA, uh, counselors. Uh, we haven't homeschooled before. Can you give us some input? Uh, this question, do you think perhaps an, under, an unintended consequence of these policies um, here and as COVID, I think, awakened America, I think God has yeah. tried to get the attention of America. Do you right. think there's a lesson in here for parents perhaps to be awakened and say, hmm, should we consider our role with education perhaps in a way we didn't do that before. We could talk about that. Yes. Well, Sam, as you said it, uh, from a Christian perspective, we believe that the role of the parents is not only just to raise the children, but to educate them. And especially if we're interested in preparing our children to be uh, Christians, light, salt and light in the world, which all Christian parents would like, right? So they want their children saved and then they want them to be impactful in the world. Probably, I'm, I'm going to be blunt here. I think the only way you could do that today successfully with certain exceptions is to teach your children at home. Because if they're in a public school today, they're going to be directed away, as you know, from the things that we believe about God. That's how HSLDA got started. There were people like you, Sam, that said, we have the duty to do this. Now, if you have the duty, you have to have the freedom to do it. And you were being told, and many parents back then, no, you don't have the freedom to teach your children what you want to teach them because you're not qualified. You're just a parent. You're not capable of teaching your children. Therefore, we're not going to allow you to be able to teach your children the values and raise them up the way you want to do them through education. You have that freedom today. Parents need to know that. That freedom is yours today. You can grab that. So you have the duty, and now you have the freedom and I think God is speaking to a lot of parents by saying, you know what, you need to examine your responsibilities as it relates to your children and to God. And that's happening. We are getting those calls. And Mike, I think that's a wonderful thing. And the listener, viewers, as you're listening to us right now, you say, hey, well, you know what, I'm walking through the same process. Well, I hope you are. If you haven't, consider that perhaps what God is allowing in exactly. part is a reprioritization of our thinking and our lives, certainly for Christian people it is. Isaac, let me go back to you, just if I could for a moment. You're uh, currently in that mode. You are using a curriculum. Uh, there are things that are available now to parents at homeschooling that weren't even available to my wife, Ruth Ann and I, when we were schooling. What are you using and what are you finding to be so helpful to you and Joe when you're schooling your children? No, I, I just praise the Lord that he has done that for us because, you know, even groups like HSLDA that are, have just ramped up so much in the last couple of decades, um, you know, we use BJU Press curriculum. We actually have uh, teachers on, you know, that, that are, 
talk to my kids over video and uh, they're trained teachers. So my wife and I both have been educators and um, worked in Christian and public schools. I grew up in a Christian school and I, every day almost as I work with my kids on these things, I say, that is so amazing. And I tell my kids how fortunate they are. I didn't have it like that when I was a kid. Even the public schools I taught in just a few years ago didn't have things like that. And then, of course, uh, the Christian atmosphere and community for a family that it brings into it through a group like BJU Press and other many good Christian, uh, biblically sound, biblical worldview groups that are out there. Uh, and uh, Isaac, thanks for sharing that. And ladies and gentlemen, hopefully we're giving you a sense of some things. If you're in that spot, as you're a parent, you have children at an out home, you can do this. Yes. I'm telling you, you can <laughs> educate at home and the tools are there where they didn't used to be there. So don't shunt what God is saying. Follow along, consider well. God will bless you if you do take this duty he's given to you, he really will. We'll be back in just a moment for a couple of concluding thoughts from Mike and myself as we wrap up this program today. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of WBPH Philadelphia, positively different television. Welcome back to our program. And as we talk with our special guest today, uh, Mike Smith, uh, we're just, it, we have so many neat opportunities for homeschooling right now. And again, some of you listening, maybe your parents or grandparents, or you're helping a family member with their children right now. And it is, it's not, not what you were expecting, but there are a lot of neat opportunities out there. So Mike, I want to go to you here as we wrap these things up, talking about the opportunities, the, the benefits, as well as, you know, the, the different things that are happening. Uh, what are some of the things that you could encourage a parent or a grandparent or somebody out there uh, that, that are trying to train their kids right now during this COVID-19, you know, shutdown environment? Um, what are some of the opportunities that they could consider that can help them and, and some of the supports that are out there to help parents be able to do this by, you know, educating their children at home? Isaac, good question. And of course, when you started and when Sam started, it's much different than it is today. There's so much available on the internet. We have a special website we've set up for folks that are just thinking about homeschooling. It's called mompossible.org, mompossible.org. And by that, it shows free materials that they can use, videos, et cetera, to entertain their children. These are not homeschoolers we're appealing to. These are schoolers at home right now that are trying to decide. The second thing we need to know is that homeschooling is possible for anyone who's motivated to do it. Mm. Uh, we have found all the studies we know, it makes no difference whether you're a high school, non-high school graduate, or a professor of education. Your children will learn under your direction when you homeschool. There is a, a, a supernatural miracle that occurs when parents will take responsibility. God calls us to raise our children and teach them. If he calls us Sam, he will provide for us. And that's the miracle we're finding. If you're a Christian parent out there and you've been all along you've been thinking, I would really like to homeschool, but I'm just not capable. That's not true. You are. And so if you ha what you have to do, you have to put your foot in the water and start. And then you'll see all of the ways that God will provide for you. There's so many support groups out there available now, uh, co-ops, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there should be no one that is thinking about homeschooling and wants to do it that doesn't do it because they don't feel like they can do it. They can do it. And Mike, that's a great way to close it. Thank you so much for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching Stand in the Gap uh, TV today. Pastor Isaac Kroc and myself, Mike, uh, Mike Smith from Homeschool Legal Defense. And our theme has been really the, the meteoric rise of homeschooling. And now we can say schooling at home, an unintended consequence of COVID-19 policies. But could I encourage all of you who are listening right now, if you are schooling at home, but you're not homeschooling in the normal sense, consider, particularly Christian parents who are watching, 
consider what God may be instructing or leading you to do now as a result of all of this. God will bless the integral, focused approach of you in your children's life. Well, thank you for watching us. We're going to have to close. We're glad that you're with us today. Visit our website, standinthegapmedia.org. Let us know that you are watching, uh, that you appreciate this program. Pray for us. And until we meet again next week, stand in the gap for truth wherever you are.